Okay, so uh, welcome back. We will pick up from where we stopped. So we talked about um, the importance of prophetic ministry. We also said that there are three levels um, of prophetic ministry that we observe as far as the scriptures are concerned. But uh, the beautiful part is that every believer can be prophetic. We can use what we hear from God in whatever God has called us to do. Uh, so I saw a question uh, from Divya here in the chat where she says, what is the spirit of prophecy referred to in uh, Revelation 19 and verse 10? Worship God for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. So uh, Divya, the spirit of prophecy, as we've already said from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that prophecy is a gift of the Holy Spirit. So it's part of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, if he's called as the spirit of prophecy, it would mean the same thing, that he carries that ability to bring revelation. Okay, And in this particular verse, uh, best testimony to Jesus. So revelation about Christ. The Holy Spirit is bringing revelation about Christ. Now we know that that's one of the responsibilities of the Holy Spirit to bring revelation, to um, introduce Christ, to glorify Christ. Okay, So uh, that's how we would understand it. Uh, would that be all right? Okay, wonderful. Okay, so then uh, let's uh, go ahead. We said so far that uh, the prophetic ministry is very, uh, it's an incredible blessing. So here in our notes, we also have a testimony which pastor has included from his own life. And uh, he talks about how there was a, a phase when he was in the US where <laughs> Many things were happening, and uh, uh, he, uh, you know, he was also many things were happening, and it it was a very difficult time in his life. And during this one phase, uh, he had the opportunity to go for a spiritual skills course, where they had called for a certain prophet to also come and minister in some of the session, and about the prophet uh, he did not know pastor you know he did not know what pastor was going when pastor had not shared it with anyone but when he came and he began to pray over pastor apparently he started speaking the same things which were in pastor's heart so this is what you know prophecy looks like so he shared this testimony and uh, how that uh, that that ministry individual uh, was such a blessing to uh, you know he writes about how Bill Date uh, one of the most significant uh, prophecies that he has ever received uh, and I'm sure you know each one of us we may have our own experiences uh, and uh, you know it, it really thrills us as to how God can speak way ahead of time and reveal his purposes, reveal his plans, uh, even reveal uh, some of the gifts and graces which he has put on people's lives, reveal uh, you know some of the opportunities that we are going to walk into. So uh, it's so encouraging. And uh, as we saw, one of the key things that God wants to do uh, uh, through the simple gift of prophecy is to edify to exhort, to comfort his children. So let's learn you know, more and more about how God has chosen to uh, uh, share you know, whatever he desires through the prophetic word. Now, when we look at the word of God, it's very interesting to note that the very first person who is referred to as a prophet is Abraham. So in Genesis 20, verse 7, um, this is the incident where, uh, you know, there is this king called Abimelech who comes and he is, uh, 
uh, uh, you know he he wants to take abraham's wife and uh, <coughs> so uh, because of this evil intention of the king, uh, uh, you know, God's uh, wrath comes upon uh, Abimelech and you know his his uh, people, and so you know the the wombs of the uh, of the women are shut, the cattle are shut, and all that. So when Abimelech is going through this, God tells Abimelech you know, when he wants to repent. God tells him uh, in Genesis twenty verse seven about Abraham. He says he is a prophet. And he will pray for you, and you shall live. So, few things for us to understand uh, here is Abraham. For us, when we say prophet, immediately we get the image of this one person. Maybe they are, you know, broad-shouldered, and they have a certain kind of style, and you know, hairstyle and everything. And immediately they say, "Thus says the Lord," you know, and that's a prophet for us. But look at this. God tells Abimelech. Abraham is a prophet, and he will do what? He won't prophesy to you; he will pray for you. Okay, so we don't ever read about Abraham saying, "Thus says the Lord." So, how is Abraham a prophet? You see, Abraham walked with the revelation of the purposes of God. You know, Abraham is called as the friend of God. Look at the life that he lived. It's not the Word that he spoke, or you know, in in terms of thus says the Lord, but it's more of Abraham was hearing from God, walking with God, listening to God, understanding the divine purposes. Okay, come on, let me walk with God. This is what God wants to do. This is what God wants from my life. You know, this is the promise of God over my generation. So Abraham is prophetic because he heard from God. His life. Was prophetic, and no wonder God said Abraham is a prophet. Abi Malik, Abraham is a prophet. He will pray for you, and you shall live. Now, here is another beautiful thing that we can understand. So Abraham lived with revelation, which made him a prophetic individual. Abraham will pray for you. So it also shows us that Abraham was in that place of prayer. He was a man of prayer. No wonder God had confidence and said, "Okay, let this man pray for you. You will live." Abraham. Even later on, we see in Genesis 18, we see when Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, God had intended for these cities to be destroyed because of sin. You know, he says it was seventeen uh, Genesis eighteen and was seventeen, um, and the Lord said, "Shall I hide from Abraham what I am uh, going to do, what what I am doing?" So, God wanted to reveal to Abraham because he's also you would see in that passage that. Abraham starts to, um, you know, function like a prophetic intercessor. He starts to talk to God and say, "God, if there are so many righteous people, you know, will you spare the land? If there are so many righteous people, will you spare?" What is he actually doing? He heard that Sodom and Gomorrah, Gomorrah are going to be destroyed, but now he is interceding for that sinful city. So he's a prophetic intercessor. Abraham was a man of prayer. and abraham is an intercessor so what is the connection you see we can have prayer and intercession without prophecy which means okay today my prayer list says i have to pray for um, you know i have to pray for the country today my prayer list says i have to pray for my health okay i'll go ahead and pray but it's like i'm not necessarily asking god what should i pray for so there's no prophetic hearing no listening from god but there's still prayer and intercession so we can have prayer and intercession without prophecy but here's the deal prophecy will not flow without prayer and intercession you see so one way is possible prayer and intercession but not prophetic but prophetic without prayer and intercession no way 
if we have to move in the prophetic flow in the prophetic look at the life of abraham god said he's a prophet we see him interceding he is a man of prayer a man who spoke to god a man who interacted with god so the prophetic is very strongly connected to prayer so unless we are prayerful people we cannot expect the prophetic to flow freely through our lives okay so that's what we learn from abraham abraham had a prophetic life point 1 point 2 abraham was a man of prayer and so we know that there is a very strong connection of the prophetic with prayer and intercession so i hope you all are doing okay so far all fine all good yes pastor okay wonderful great let's let's move forward all right so now let's begin to look at what are the other things that we can pick up about you know prophecy prophet prophetic ministry uh we have moses and aaron okay moses and aaron uh who were sent as representatives of the uh the israelites to pharaoh and they had to lead them they had to lead them out so when we read about uh you know moses and aaron uh, one of the things that we notice is there is this hebrew word called called nabi okay nabi which is used so exodus 7 was one uh, god says see i have made you as god to pharaoh and aaron your brother shall be your prophet so moses came up with all his excuses he said no i can't talk god i'm not fluent cuz okay fine don't worry moses i will send aaron as the spokes person now for that spokes person the term hebrew term which is used is nabi aaron your brother shall be your prophet okay so that is nabi and this word nabi is used 309 times in the old testament so nabi sim simply means one who speaks for another okay so here in india i think about maybe three decades ago uh, many of us <laughs> would read uh, your parents and grandparents talk about oh i got a post uh, nowadays you know everything is email whatsapp immediate communication is happening so very rare for people to write those post letters to one another but many decades ago that was the case uh, and uh, we would have these post men post women you know uh, in their khaki clothes coming on the cycle and give it's something like that so somebody is delivering a message that is prophet okay even today when we prophesy who are we we are like those people who deliver the message and what did god tell moses moses look i will send you aaron he will be your prophet he will be nabi or he will be the one who speaks on your behalf he is so a nabi or a prophet is nothing but another person's mouthpiece in this case mouthpiece speaking so what do we do when we prophesy i am just a mouthpiece he speaks god speaks i am here to deliver the message and i have to do my best to deliver the message uh, in in a way that you know god is honored people are blessed so that is how we see god work a prophet or nabi uh, is nothing but a spokesperson or a mouthpiece so that we have understood now let's go on with these hebrew words and see what else we can gain from this word prophet prophet you know wherever it, it, it it's there so going back to um, or going forward into the times of samuel samuel the great prophet and you know samuel had a lot of other prophets who were training under him uh, in uh, first chronicles 29 29 it says now the acts of king david first and last indeed 
they are written in the book of Samuel, the seer. You see, another word is introduced here, Hebrew word. Okay, But these are all related. We saw the word prophet, Nabi. Now, let's see, what are these words? Samuel, the seer. In Hebrew, it is Roe. Roe, R-O-E-H. Roe. In the book of Nathan, the prophet. See, interchangeable, Nabi. Again, Nabi. So Samuel the seer, we know that Samuel was a prophet, but Samuel is termed as the seer. And Nathan the prophet, Nabi. Okay, let's move on. And in the book of Gad the seer, Jose. So there are three different terms that are used to describe men of God who spoke the message, who were the mouthpiece of God. Why? Because it's just explaining to us the process of receiving the message. All of them received the message, but seemingly in a different way. So what is this? Uh, what is the process? Samuel the seer, Gad the seer, Roe, Jose, Hebrew words, they are telling us that these men had the experience of visualization or seeing something. What could they have seen? They could have seen um, visions. They could have gazed into the spiritual realm. They could have had spiritual revelations. Uh, they could have, you know, seen, uh, you know, a person, we don't know. There, there are things they saw, their spiritual man saw. And to describe the process, the prophetic process, which Samuel and Gad had, they are called as seers. They are prophets, but what is their process? Visualization. Okay, so we are understanding more about uh, the prophetic. So the message from God can be received in the form of visuals. Okay, And we see these same words repeated in many other places. So it tells us that there were a lot of people, prophets, who actually saw something. Okay, So that is one, one of the ways in which God releases the message visually. See, even Amos. When God was speaking to Amos, Amos chapter 7, verses 14 and 15, um, you know, Amos says, I was no prophet. He says, Nabi, I, I was no prophet, nor was I a son of a prophet, but I was a sheep breeder and a tender of sycamore fruit. Then the Lord took me as I followed the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. So, uh, so far we saw Samuel, Gad, you know, they are people who saw. Now, when you read other passages of Amos, God, you know, there were times when God said, okay, Amos, what do you see? I see a basket of summer fruit. You know, Amos says, um, I forget which passage, uh, Amos chapter, okay, I, I forget which passage that was, but even Amos saw. So God told him, uh, you, you see and you interpret what I'm showing you. But in this case, in the verse that I just read, you know, Amos, the terms that are used there, prophet, prophet, nabi, nabi. What is the meaning? So we saw one process. One process is the visualization process. Now, why is it that there are some other prophets who are called as nabi? Everyone must be a seer then, isn't it? Roe Jose. Why, why some are specifically called as Nabi? Well, that term Nabi, we saw that, uh, you know, it is um, uh, uh, a mouthpiece of God. But as you look at the meaning, that term Naba is also referring to prophecy. Okay. And the, the, the understanding which we gain from that word Naba is inspiration okay inspiration so here's the second process through which i can hear from god first one 
visualization. So there were people who saw images and they were able to share a message from God. Now here are the second kind, Nabi, who were inspired. Inspired is nothing but bubble up. Okay. Or uh, you would say flow forth. So as one begins to speak, words are coming. Words are coming. You don't know how where they're coming from. You see, they, they're just bubbling up from inside. There's no, I'm not seeing anything, but I'm able to deliver a message which is not even in my mind. So that is called as the na Naba prophecy, you know, that kind of prophecy. So here is the second way in which people prophesied. They were inspired. Okay, They may not have seen any visual. So when they were inspired, what happened? They spoke words. When they were inspired, they spoke sentences. When they were inspired, they spoke phrases. Okay, So uh, a lot of things came out of prophets, just like that. It's just bubbling up from within them. So this is the manner in which you know, we see God working through men and women of God. And uh, we know that in the Old Testament, uh, there were prophets. We will study about it uh, later as well. They were, uh, you know, selected uh, people upon whom that prophetic anointing would come and they would speak the word of God. And even people, they also understood that. So there were times when people said, um, hey, come, you know, let's go, uh, let's um, go to the seer. Uh, remember the time when Samuel lost his donkeys? <laughs> what did he decide to do? Let's go to the seer. Maybe God will show the seer where the donkeys are. And so God's spirit came upon men and women and they used to prophesy in all these ways. Now, here is uh, something more that we want to add. We said that there are two processes of generally that we notice of the way uh, the word comes to us. But after having understood this, we should not box God up and say, hey, I'm a seer. Yeah, so and so is a inspired man, Nabi. Okay, they only bubble up with, with words. What if, you know, I am generally a seer, but one day I'm praying for someone and uh, I'm not seeing anything, but words are coming. You see, we must let God work in any way He wants. We shouldn't get stuck uh, in, hey, this is the only way in which God will speak. So whenever we uh, try to box, God up and his process. See, understanding his process is not to limit us. It is to expand our thinking and notice that, okay, wow, God might work in this way and in other ways. Uh, and, you know, primarily he, he gives me visuals uh, and, you know, pictures and all of that. But maybe there are times when God might choose to work in a different way right, uh, through my life. So we must be open. We must be open to any form of a process. Okay, so um, are you all with me? Any any questions so far? Any uh, inputs, experiences, anything you would like to share? Yes, Divya, please go ahead. Thank you, Pastor. I just had a question, actually. Uh, so just as you mentioned that uh, in the first uh, session regarding prophesying believer, uh, then uh, the grace gift of prophesying, the office of the prophet. So all these are these applicable even, even in the Old Testament times, even as we are discussing the Old Testament prophets. Uh, can we say that oh, they, uh, they operated as in the office of prophecy or so, something like that. I was just trying to relate both. Uh, excellent question, Divya. It just shows me that you understood what we were uh, talking about. Uh, well, the answer is no. We can't apply it in the Old Testament times. Because, um, uh, I mean, in the sense that generally what we notice is when people prophesied, it would be prophets. So God would speak through his prophets. 
yes there are occasional instances where you know we also read about um, the donkey speaking or uh, we read about uh, uh, you know uh, Saul when he was in the company of the prophets he prophesied but the anointing on his life was a kingly anointing okay but it was just an occasional thing so uh, normal normal pe believers prophesying uh, and then some others moving in the prophetic ministry realm we don't see that in the old testament we see that in the new testament because we have the indel indwelling presence of the holy spirit all of us that was not possible before the redemptive work of christ on the cross of calvary okay so uh, i hope that answers your question yeah, yes, uh, I just uh, wanted to have a follow up question also. So uh, when we talk about the major prophets or the minor prophets, uh, can we say that uh, they they are officially prophets just to put it in those terms, like like they operated as in the office of prophet prophecy? Is it right to say that? Yes, yes, they were. They were all prophets. See, major and minor prophet classification has to do more with the, you know, the length, the um, the importance, the impact of their messages. Okay, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't class gra grade them within the section of a prophet. There's only one category we know of, which is prophet. They were all prophets. Okay, okay. So there's no cla classification in the Old Testament times. Mm -hmm. Profit is profit. That's all. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Sivya. Good. Very uh, relevant question. So it's nice. You know, now we are uh, we we are getting a, a sense of how God spoke, uh, and uh, God, His word. He always desired to to speak. You see how He talked about Abraham, and He said, "How can I do something without revealing it?" You know, to uh, Abraham, my friend, like God is God. He likes to share what's on his heart. He's not a God who will do things uh, without communicating it to his people. Uh, and uh, that's how, you know, the um, uh, work of God is. Now, uh, as we move on, I'm on page 16 in our notes. Uh, we see that. In the Old Testament, we also have some references that tell us that God loved to share his word. So Amos 3, verses 7 and 8, it says, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servants, the prophets. So that's how he worked. And we see that in the Old Testament. And what a privilege. In today's times, we in the New Covenant, all of us can hear from God. You know, all of us can flow in the gift of uh, the basic gift of prophecy. So we can hear from God and God is willing. God is wanting. God is desiring to reveal his secrets. OK, but of course, you know, we, we must pursue it as well. And um, God wants us to have that sort of an uh, intimate relationship with him for us to know more and more from God. And. You know, when God speaks, uh, it makes a difference. So in the same passage, Amos chapter 3, uh, verse 7, verse 8 says, A lion has roared, who will not fear? The Lord God has spoken, who can but prophesy? So basically, um, it, it, what Amos is saying is, whenever God spoke to the prophets, they knew. See, a lion, when it roars in the jungle, everyone knows. You know, it brings fear in our hearts. So when God speaks, it's distinct. We are aware. Oh, wow. This is what he's wanting to say. We are aware. Okay. So that's how he uh, communicates. Now, reading further, Jeremiah talks about his, uh, his um, experience of hearing the voice of God. And he says something like, uh, his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. This is Jeremiah 20 verse 9, where he says that sometimes the experience which uh, prophets of old have had is, you know, they, they have a word in their bones. It's like you, you are convinced. You, uh, you feel a sense of uh, compulsion 
to share the word because it's in your bones and it's burning the word of god and you can't keep quiet but go ahead and release that word so that's the kind of experience these prophets had they knew god was a speaking god he wanted to reveal his heart to them they knew that when god speaks we can't contain it we know that he has spoken and you know his word is bubbling within you know that's what the prophets are saying when god spoke for them it was like it, it was like burning in his bones he had to take the message out and uh, deliver it otherwise you know he would not be comfortable or at peace so those were the kind of experiences that they had now let's continue to talk about the prophetic process we said oh visualization so <laughs> how does god do this? uh what what does he reveal when he gives us these uh, images so we have certain scriptures that give us insight so hosea hosea chapter 12 and verse 10 Hosea said, uh, uh, "I have also spoken the prophets, and have multiplied visions. I have given symbols through the witness of the prophets. So notice, God is speaking to the prophets. How? By multiplying visions. But there is an important word to take notice of. What is that word? I have given symbols." okay symbols through the witness of the prophets so we'll talk more we'll talk more about these symbols that god gave the prophets so now we understood that god gave a word and it was forceful you know within the being of the prophets and they had to release it now in what manner did he give this word in visualization process uh, god is saying visions symbols Okay, let's look at another passage. Hebrew uh, Numbers chapter twelve, verses five through eight. Then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both went forward. Then he said, "Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a how vision. I speak to him in a." dream not so with my servant moses he is faithful in all my house i speak to him face to face even plainly and knock in dark sayings and he sees the form of the lord why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant moses so this is actually a corrective word which is coming to aaron and miriam but in what god is saying there are some clues about how he speaks to the prophets so how does he speak to the prophets earlier what did we see in hosea 12:10 we said i have multiplied visions and i have given symbols okay so we got that now here god is telling if there is a prophet among you i the lord make myself known to him in a vision i speak to him in a dream Okay, and later on, one more uh, thing we can pick up is dark sayings, dark sayings, and of course, you know, he points out there that uh, Moses had this beautiful experience of speaking to God face to face. Now, do we all desire to uh, speak to God face to face? Yes, you know, we do want to, want that. And uh, does God speak that way? Yes, you know, God can speak that way to. Uh, his people but here's the common way okay we said our god is a speaking god so there is a common way in which he speaks generally um not to say that he'll not speak face to face we can always desire that but we must become familiar with the general way in which god speaks so here he said visions dreams dark sayings so we saw two terms visions dreams we kind of understand and we will talk more about it later as well but there are two new words uh, that we have come across one is symbols another is dark sayings so what is this god is not giving the prophets 
a very direct message. Instead, he is giving them symbols, dark sayings. It simply tells us that once we receive this, there has to be an effort to interpret what we have seen. What are these symbols? They could be parables. Parables are, you know, these are like regular life uh, um, uh, stories and events that we are familiar with. We could be viewing that, but there can be a message in it. So the prophets could have actually received a parable. Or you know they could have received, uh, in English language, we say um, uh, similitudes. It's similar. Okay, like you you see a line in your in your in your uh, uh, image, that image of a line, and then you have to interpret what does it mean, you know? Because in scripture, if you say, if you see, we have the line of Judah, but you also have uh, Satan. He's like a roaring lion. So the prophet has to now interpret what does God mean? Because I'm seeing symbols. I'm seeing dark sayings. It has to be correctly interpreted, you know, as per the Bible and as per the leading of the Holy Spirit. So <laughs> symbols and dark sayings are all these things which are not a clear cut message. Uh, uh, but, you know, there is message inside what we are actually seeing. So it can be a comparison. It can be a riddle. It can be a drama. You know how sometimes you, I always think in these cartoons, it's so weird, isn't it? Uh, that uh, uh, let's say a cartoon character is just running and uh, he feels he has to, he has to enter his house. He'll suddenly draw a door and the door will open and, you know, he'll go into another space. Like, how does that happen? But in our dreams and visions, sometimes it's like that. And you're like, what is this? Uh, but as we think with God, we will be able to get the message of what God is saying. You know, God speaks in parables, riddles, similitudes, comparisons. Uh, and from there, you know, we, we must get the message. Oh, I saw a, a person. I, I saw a creature. What does who does this person portray? Uh, what does this creature portray? You know, so that's the way in which God is actually communicating. And that's the way he communicated even to the prophets. So all these symbols, and even when we say there are visions and dreams, there can be symbols in the visions and dreams. And so these pictures uh, and this form of communication needed to then be interpreted okay so we will learn more about uh interpretation and um personal prophecy and all of that a bit later on so now uh just going along this this prophetic process there is an example of a prophet called as balaam uh, in the word of god uh, we will look at his example now definitely uh he was not a a, a prophet to um Basically, we say he was a prophet for profit, okay, to make money. Uh, he he was ready to to prophesy against God's people. So that is a greedy uh, prophet we have here. Uh, however, when we read about his prophetic process and his prophetic experience, we can gain a lot uh, uh, about the way God spoke to him. So in Numbers twenty four verses 15 and 16. Uh, if anybody has that open in front of you, uh, could you kindly read it? Numbers 24, verses 15 and 16, please. Numbers chapter 24, verse 15 and 16. Then he uttered his oracle, the oracle of Val Valam, son of Beor, the oracle of one whose eye sees clearly, the oracle of one who hears the word of God, who has knowledge from the Most High, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who falls prostrate, and whose eyes are opened. Great. So, uh, just in these two verses, uh, 
so many different methods of god's communication uh, have been described so he took up his oracle and said the utterance of balaam the son of boer the utterance of the man notice whose eyes were opened the visualization process the utterance of him who hears the words of god hearing audio okay listening process and has the knowledge of the most high meaning information reception of information okay now who sees the vision of the almighty okay vision going further who falls down who falls down so there is also an experience of physically laying prostrate in front of god when the message uh, came to balam prostrate with eyes wide open so his physical eyes were open or we could also say his spiritual eyes were open right so these are all things for us to um, think about and understand how did balam pick up the message of god what was happening you know how was he hearing from god so let's let's go with the first uh, point there the utterance of the man whose eyes are opened or utterance is nothing but the words the message of the man whose eyes were opened so eyes were opened what does this mean is it necessarily physical eyes see primarily this has to do with our spiritual eyes so the spirit man has senses we will talk about this as well so comparable to our uh, human vision our spirit has vision okay and our spirit can see so it's telling us that balam was able to look in the spirit realm he was able to see through his spirit man so his eyes were open are referring to what referring to the spirit eyes being open and that's how he was receiving the message of god now a parallel would be uh, the time when elisha elisha's servant do you remember he sends out his uh, servant in second kings chapter 6 and he says go stand and see and the servant sees suddenly his human eyes can see <coughs> armies of god protecting and surrounding and being there for elisha and the servant and he he realizes oh wow we are not minority but in this case his human eyes elisha prayed and said god open his eyes so the spiritual eyes were opened and he was even able to see through his human eyes the armies that were standing around so you see god is not limited we can gaze into the spirit realm through our spiritual eyes now when we look into the spirit realm through our spiritual eyes our natural eyes may or may not be able to pick up what is going on okay so uh, some people say uh, open eyed visions shut eyed visions so many descriptions and technicalities are there but let's not worry about all that you know when god there are many instances uh, that you know we we see in scripture uh, when uh, when you say stephen he saw before he was dying he looked into heaven you can ask are how did you look into heaven the spirit man could see so uh, 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 the year that king uzziah died i saw right isaiah writes about it so we can see our spirit man has a capacity to view and pick up imagery okay so even balam talks about it and he says uh, the the utterance of the man whose eyes were opened eyes open meaning spiritual eyes primarily second thing you notice utterance of the man who heard right the the uh, heard what so here's what we see in scripture that god speaks uh, if you recall samuel is a classic example isn't it so he was in eli's temple and what happened he was hearing his name samuel samuel he didn't know what to do with it he did not even know how to recognize the word of god but a more experienced priest 
Eli taught Samuel. Samuel, you are hearing the voice of God. So you respond. The next time you hear, say, here I am. So somebody had to teach him to um, be sensitive to the voice of the Lord and also to respond to it. And in this case, it was you know amazing. We, we noticed that Samuel was hearing. Eli was not hearing. So when the sometimes when we hear the voice of God, it can it generally tends to be to that particular audience. And in this case, Samuel was the audience that God was speaking to. Now, does God speak audibly all the time? In our usual experience, what we say is we get the words of God, but minus the sound. Okay, so uh, we are not saying that you can't hear like with audio, with sound, the voice. We can, but normally we might pick up a word in our spirit. Okay, and we'll talk about it. So normal processes, we can hear from God. But when we say, I heard the scripture, basically, we got that scripture minus the sound. Okay, that's how it works so it's possible to hear the voice of god again how can we pick it up the inner man the spirit man has senses it can see and it can hear okay. so the next is receive the knowledge of the lord so uh, how do we understand this receiving the knowledge of the lord see in our because we are all uh, computer generation it's like download. You know, sometimes you have an attached file, you click download. You can even download an entire PDF, a whole book. A whole book comes into your spirit. And you have so much information. God just what? What did he do? He downloaded it. So receiving the knowledge of God is like that. We don't understand how, but it is delivered into our spirit. And then, you know, it can well up, it can bubble up, and we can keep releasing the word of God. So it can happen in that way. He saw the vision of the Almighty. Vision is nothing but, you know, we've been talking about uh, seeing a picture, like, you know, uh, what do you see? I see a basket of summer fruit and all. But it can also be like a movie, like a motion picture, where that's a vision where we are seeing, oh, this happened, then that happened, then something else. So we can even see an entire story unfold. OK, so that is a vision. Now, again, about vision, you could say a shut eye vision, open eye vision, meaning normal eyes, human eyes. So all that is there. Then last one, he fell down with eyes wide open. That's nothing but something like an experience of a trance. You remember Peter? Peter also. Right, he he uh, he was in a trance when he had that vision of the uh, tent come down and all the animals. Where God said, "Hey, come on, you can go, you can eat them." So these were the experiences which Balaam had to receive the word of the Lord. So anyway, I'm just going to close uh, this morning. I think we've we are building, you know, little by little we are building, and it'll help us flow in the prophetic. So the beautiful thing is that we have a god who speaks uh, he speaks in creative ways okay uh, he wants to to refresh our lives uh, and you know his word is to build us up he will not send us a word to break us down but he wants to send us a, a word to build us up to comfort us to encourage us and as god's people you know we must uh, yield to what the lord is doing he's a god who knows the deep and secret things uh, the book of daniel says and uh, he knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him daniel 222 and he's a god as daniel said who reveals secrets daniel 228 and so we have this beautiful privilege of discovering the message of god hearing uh, what God wants to say. So uh, I'm excited. I hope uh, you all are excited. And let's continue to get better and better at hearing God's voice. So let's just quickly close now. Uh, at the end of the class, uh, would somebody please be able to lead in prayer? Let's pray. 
Hey, Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for uh, everything that we learned today, God. God, we thank you that you are a God who speaks. You are the living God. And you have given us this privilege to listen to you each and every moment of this life. As you made us your children, you may gave us that privilege to hear from you lord we are so thankful god help us to open our spiritual eyes and ears and uh, help us to get more deeper into the relationship that we can hear from you so that we'll have a clear guidance so that we can be a blessing to others as we learn help us to flow much more in this prophecy lord be with us and guide us in jesus name i pray amen Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffina. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day as you continue on with your classes. I'll see you all next week. Bye for now.